Hi guys, I uh, was just checking the painting that we did on yesterday's live stream, which is looking rather good. Uh, don't forget you can join us every single Wednesday at now 7.30, which is the new time of broadcast for the live painting streams. Now, today's video, uh, boys and girls, is all about the top six things that you should avoid if you're an artist. Now, just before we get going on that subject, I just wanted to say a massive thank you if you subscribed already. The channel's really growing. The general consensus is that everybody's really loving everything that we're doing and all the free advice and the tips and all the cool stuff. So thank you, thank you if you've already subscribed. If you haven't, then please do hit that subscribe button because when we get to 10,000 subscribers, I'm going to give a piece of art away, an original. Someone is going to get one of the originals somewhere on the globe, but in order for you to uh, be in with a shout, you've got to subscribe. So hit that button. And thank you very much if you've already done that and for supporting us. That's fantastic. Okay, so ladies and gents, let's crack on. I'm going to give you point number one. Number one reason, uh, sorry, um, thing that you should avoid uh, if you're an artist, okay? And this is probably the most important one. And this is about expectations. So here we go. You really, really got to avoid having massively high expectations. Okay, very quickly, what do I mean by that? So you've given yourself a website and you've launched on social media and you've got 30 amazing pieces of work and nothing happens. You've really, really got to pare back your expectations. Look, you know, this business, it's a long term thing. There's a lot of work to do and you have to be really consistent in what you're doing. So if you think right from day one, as soon as you upload something to Saatchi Art that you're going to sell it, if you think you've gone onto Art Finder and suddenly you're going to get 25 orders or you've launched an Etsy shop or uh, you're, you've, you've done something on somebody's platform somewhere and nothing happens, then just be very realistic. Just try and bring your expectation level down a little bit. And then if something really great and big happens, happy days, fantastic. Okay, so that's number one. Number two, and that's to avoid the inconsistency thing. Now, again, there's some common themes coming through a lot of the videos now that I'm doing. And hopefully you'll start to pick up these little threads. Uh, this one is all about being consistent in your work. So, you know, you've got to do something. I always have the mantra that you should do something every single day that puts you in a better place than you were the day before. So consistency is key. If you're going to just paint once every three or four months or create something, you know, a couple of pieces in the summer and then, oh, find an excuse not to do anything until the winter. It just doesn't work like that. You've got to be consistent. So you need to avoid all this inconsistency wherever you can. Big mistake. Nothing's going to happen if you're inconsistent. Okay, point number three. Nearly got it wrong then. Don't rely on people too much. Okay, now it's really important, especially in the early stages, you're going to have your family and your friends uh, really to rely on. You're going to need their support to help you. But as time goes on, the more you rely on people, the more disappointed you're going to get. And I say that quite loosely, but I'm going to give you a couple of examples, okay? So we were just thinking, Adi and I, about what examples we could use. So I'm, I'm going to sort of see if I can do one now. So imagine, okay, so imagine you're a potter and uh, you make you know, uh, you throw clay and you, you do pots. Uh, so you're going to do a demonstration and uh, you're borrowing a big potter's wheel for this demonstration and you get let down on the day, on the morning that you're off to do your demo, your public demo, by the person who was going to lend you the potter's wheel. What happens then? Got to have a backup plan, okay? So part of this non-reliance on people, not relying on them too much, is that you can have a backup plan. You must always have a plan. What am I going to do if everything goes wrong? Let's stand under the light, shall we? Okay, so that's what this is about. So don't stick all your eggs in the, oh, well, someone else can worry about it basket. You've got to take ownership of everything yourself because that's the way you control everything. Control is good. It really is a good thing. It just means that you've got a way of doing things without having to rely on other people. Okay, so that's point three. Point four, love this one. This is my favourite. Don't be the starving artist. You know, there's this popular myth about, oh, you know, I am a, I'm a starving artist. Oh, well, please, you know, spend $50 and buy this print because it means I can eat tonight. No, 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 no. That's a myth. You don't need to do that anymore. Look, you know, for me, I've got one product line, which is everything you see around me. This is the paintings. This is what I do. However, I also diversify. Now, in this day and age, you've got a thousand different things that you can diversify with. So let's just take 
what I do for an example. Okay, so I can look at things like licensing, licensing images. Uh, I can look at doing e-courses. I could do an e-book. I could hold classes every Saturday morning. Uh, I can offer prints. Never done prints. I'm completely against it for lots of different reasons. You know, and, uh, you know, even stuff like going into printed media and uh, calendars and actually, interestingly enough, <laughs> and I do have one here. I'll, I'll prove what I mean, all right? So, so you know, look, it's a, this is a successful venture enterprise, you know, I sell, I sell paintings every year, but even I go into, uh, into diversification. Now, admittedly, this is a 2018 calendar and we're still waiting for the 2020 calendars to come through, but, you know, I, I do these as corporate giveaways to give to people and also sold them from time to time but you know it's not a massive revenue generator for me but it's great it's a bit of PR and publicity but even I go into doing alternative things so you know what you've got to think of is look if you're not selling your art you don't have to be this starving artist anymore it's it's an absolute cliche and it's just it's a had its day you know you, people might have been starving in the 1800s and 19th century and things like that but you don't need to do it anymore so think about expanding keep your main product the main thing but when that doesn't sell don't think oh god what am i going to do i can't eat tonight go and diversify trust me there are markets out there that are waiting for what you are doing so go and find them don't starve anymore okay point five avoid stupid and ridiculous pricing okay I see this absolutely everywhere. Now, I know pricing of work is very, very difficult. I get that, you know, and I have to think about it constantly and really try very hard to make sure that I try and get the pricing right on each piece and so it fits with what I do. But here's the thing, all right? I, I've seen this and I'm sure you have already, you know, especially on places like Saatchi Art and other online platforms. Um, you know, an artist that's maybe not sold anything or sold one or two and they're doing these tiny small you know prints or something like that and trying to charge ten thousand dollars for it well you know there's no right and wrong in pricing here but you know come on we all know when something's either priced way too high or way too low let's say i don't know you're um you're a landscape artist and you've just spent nine months painting this most beautiful huge i don't know oil painting of some scene and you charge 150 quid for it i mean that's just ridiculous you know so Whilst it's crazy to think that you can really price something stupidly high and think that you're going to make an absolute mass ton of money, the opposite is also true. Don't undervalue yourself, uh, you know, because that puts buyers off as well. So although this is difficult, and I do know that this is difficult to price, try to avoid the stupid ends of the spectrum and try and put yourself somewhere in the middle. Okay, that's that. So anyway, point number six. Okay, just to finish everything off now. Um, stop saying yes to everything. I get, I get lots of emails from artists, thank you by the way, if you're one of those who sent me an email, uh, saying, oh, I've, I've been offered this, but I don't know if I really want to do it, or uh, does this opportunity come up and I don't know if I want to do that? Well, look, you don't have to do everything that's offered to you, or if you get an email about something, you don't have to enter every competition, you don't have to sign up to putting your work in a prestigious book, <laughs> You know, you don't have to believe all the marketing hype on all the emails that you endlessly get sent. You don't have to commit to any of that. And ask yourself this question, wouldn't it be better if you spent that time, that money, and that energy into promoting yourself? Because I personally think it is, all right? I've never gone in for any of this kind of thing, you know, and I'm proving that it works, which is great. Anyway, so that's the six top, I could go on forever and a day, but I won't because I wanted to keep this kind of short for you. All right, but I could genuinely talk about this subject all night because there are so many pitfalls as an artist and I'm just trying to help you avoid some of the really crucial ones, okay? So it kind of manages your transition into earning a living from this a little bit easier. Okay, so just before we go, I also want to mention a couple of other things. Now, uh, if, if you're one of those people who's been watching us on the live streams, that's where I came from just when we came in at the video, checking on what we did yesterday, then thank you so much for watching. And remember, if you haven't watched one of those yet, then we do live stream every single Wednesday at 7.30 GMT. So if you're in America, 2.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, okay? So we'll put links out on social media for all that and for the next one, but it's great fun. The viewing figures are growing and I'm really, really grateful on behalf of me and Aidy for you watching that. It's amazing, but if you haven't seen it already, do tune in and watch us live. It's, it's, it's a hoot. And it also gives you some behind the scenes about what it is to paint abstracts. 
Um, also, if you've been watching these videos regularly and you're getting help and advice and inspiration from what we're talking about, bearing in mind this is all free, there's no charge for this, this is not an e-course, <laughs> we're shooting this every week, so you get the benefit of our experience. So we'd like to thank you very, very much for doing that as well. Don't forget to give us a like and a thumbs up, subscribe, said at the start of the video, going to be giving a painting away very soon. So if you think anybody else might have benefit from hearing what we're talking about today, please do send them the link and share. So that's it, ladies and gents. Thank you so much for watching. Drop me your comments down below. I'll try and answer as many as possible for you. And I hope you enjoyed the video. See you on the next one.